Hello everyone, this is the video lecture for College Algebra, Math 1414, Section 11.3. This is geometric uh, metric uh, sequences and series. Cool. Um, just because it's an adjective this time, there's actually nothing new about it. It's just geometric. <laughs> and uh, this is our last section. We are so close to the end, so uh, let's push through this. What does geometric mean? We are going to be multiplying and dividing. So that's the idea, multiplying and dividing each time. Here's some examples. I got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, uh, 1024, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to say times 2, times 2. So uh, by the way, what are they going to say? This R little r is your common ratio and i want to say always say ration i guess uh ratio and so here r is equal to two all right here's another one i got one a third a ninth <clears throat> a 27th r is equal to one third um because i'm multiplying by a third each time last one five negative one positive one fifth negative one over 25 See how it's going positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, because you're multiplying by a negative one-fifth each time. Negative, if you're multiplying by a negative, two negatives make a positive, but then you got a positive times a negative makes a negative, and then a negative times a negative makes a positive. Mm, da -da 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 -da. 11, 3, 3. I got A1 is equal to 162. R is equal to one-third. And they say, go and find out what's going on. A1, what is it? And you're like, uh, it's 162. A2, so what I'm going to do is multiply by a one-third. So I'm dividing by three each time, and I got 54 out of that. Uh, A3, again, I'm going to be multiplying by a third, divided by three, whatever you want to call it. And I got an 18, um, so on and so forth. There's another formula that you could use. You don't have to use it for this particular one, though, but it is a n is equal to a1 times r to the n minus 1. I know my r's and n's look similar. I'm trying to distinguish them for you. Okay. Let's do another one. This is just like deja vu here because I know we just did the same style of problems in the last section. And for me, that was just about two minutes ago. Um, <laughs> so I have this formula at 7. Uh, times a sub n minus 1, a sub n minus 1, that's all in the uh, subscript. Uh, we've seen this before. This is my current answer is equal to 7 times my previous answer. And so a1, what is it? Oh, I don't know. It's probably a 12 because they said so. a2, notice that all I'm going to do is say times 7. 12 times 7 is 84. And then a3, doing it all over again. Multiply by the 7. I got 588. Uh, and I got bored, so I didn't do any more. 11, 3, 11. I got a1 is equal to 4. I got r is equal to negative 3. And they say, find the 10th term. Now, this is actually not too bad. Could you go here? I'm going to do it with Desmos. I am. I'm going to do it right now. We're starting at 4, and then we go negative 3 each time. So scientific and so i'm starting with a4 this is how it works four uh and then i'm going to say okay uh four times a negative three right and then i'm going to say uh negative 12 times a negative three and i got a 36 times a negative three and i'm going to be sitting here all day trying to get to the 10th so no i won't do that <laughs> in Desmos. Man, I was just so excited, but it just takes forever. So, obviously, there is a way to get to that uh, number, but how about we just use a formula instead? And we have that new formula that we just learned, a sub n. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. Uh, I have a sub 1. I have an r. I have an n right there, 10. 10 minus 1. Uh, I put that in the calculator... Notice the 9 power and the parentheses. Very important to keep those parentheses there. And I got a negative 7, 8, 7, 3, 2. And that is your answer. 
Um, notice that it's easier to use formulas. That's okay. That's okay. 11, 3, 17. Let's do it. I got 4, 12, 36, dot, dot, dot. And um, they say find the formula A sub N is equal to box times a box uh, to the N minus 1. And you have to fill in those boxes. Uh, well, this is actually not too bad. Notice that they're wanting the first term here. This is A1. This is R. Uh, and so I'm gonna, just going to plug it in. That's a 4. Uh, how much am I multiplying by each time? Do you see? It's times 3. That's my R. And, uh, well, we're done. Um, <laughs> in fact, here's the thing that, about this problem, and I'm, I'm trying to remember how this works. Do you type it like this, or do you type it all in at once? I cannot remember. I have both of them boxed, and I can't remember, uh, but this is what my notes look like. If they have two separate boxes, put them in. If they just want a formula and you have to type the whole thing, sure. And then you could use that to go and find whatever particular number. Very similar to the last section <clears throat> is what I want to say. <clears throat> and just like the last section, we have a new formula. Oh, my goodness. Um, this is for the summation of these um, the summation of these geometric sequences to make it a series. So a sub n is, or s sub n is equal to a1 times 1 minus r to the n, all divided by 1 minus r. Again, that's my sum. I'm going to supposed to be adding all these numbers up. 4 plus 12 plus 36 plus whatever. Now, because these numbers get big really fast, obviously it's going to be a big number uh, most of the time, unless maybe something cancels. Um, I like this formula a lot more because it actually does not have you, uh, it's not forcing you to go back and find your last term all the time. Uh, you need your first term, you need your R, very simple, and then you just plug it in. Uh, so 11, 3, 25, I got a 4, 8, 16, 32, and so forth. Uh, and they say find S13. So not just the 13th term, they're saying all of these numbers 13 times and then you're adding them all up, okay? Plus, 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 plus. Uh, this is actually super easy, uh, given that new formula. So S sub 13 is equal to my A1. You can see right here, A1 is my first term, 4. 1 minus, and my R. What am I multiplying by each time? Oh, I did it again. I don't want to zoom in. No, no, no. Sorry, there's like a button on my little stylus that just does that for me. Um... I'm multiplying by 2 each time. And so I'm going to have a 2, just following this formula here, 2 to the 13th power, and all divided by 1 minus 2. One thing, one thing, just pause for a second, parentheses. Super important. Got to figure that number out down there first. I'm going to type this one into Desmos just so that you could see my format, my style of doing this. Um, because, well, it's important. So uh, I got here four times. Actually, I'm going to put it all in the power, or in the numerator. Four times, one minus, two power, 13. And then divided by, whoa, oh, it's already there, uh, one minus two. Okay, so 32, 7, 64. Cool. That's your answer. You're done. Pretty easy, especially with big calculators like that. 11, 3, 31. I have a uh, summation of i equals 1 to 7 of 3 to the i power. You know where to go. Oh, yes. Let me just remind you one more time. Uh, we have Desmos graphing. And so if I start typing here, again, just reminding you, if you type S-U-M, sum, uh, then you put a 1, you put a 7. Instead of using i, you and n. So we got a 3 to the power of n. And confirmed, that is my answer. Wow, that was fast. You don't have to do it any other way. I'm going to do the formula just to make sure we're okay. Uh, S7 is going to be equal to my first term. If I plug the 1 in, what do we get? 3 to the 1 power is a 3. And then we have uh, my R. Now, that's kind of weird here. What's my R? It's actually right here. It's your base. 
if you went and started to solve and you got a 3, you plug in another one's a square, 3 squared is a 9, and you got a 27, what are you multiplying by each time here? Times 3. That's your R, 3. Now to the 7th power, all divided by 1 minus 3. Uh, when you do the math, of course, it comes out to the same thing. I'm just wanting to make a point that we can still use formulas, but eh, sometimes not really needed. So, next question. And this is actually a very good and, and uh, important question, okay? So I got 1 plus a fourth plus a sixteenth plus a 1 over 64 plus dot, 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 as in forever. It'll keep going on forever and ever. Um, this is an infinite, infinite geometric series. Wow, that sounds fancy. Cuz it is. Um hey, you're in uh you're in college algebra, you're going to be moving on the calculus though, right? You will see this again in calculus for sure. Calculus 2 in particular. Uh we talk a lot about uh sequences and series there. Won't that just be so fun? Um and it will be actually because this one has a special formula. Okay, so uh, burn this in the brain because it's very important to you. S or S infinity, I don't know. I They say S. I like S infinity because it's an infin infinite thing there. There you go. Is equal to A1 divided by 1 minus R. That's it. A1 divided by 1 minus R. That's your formula. Wow, that was super easy. So I can actually find out what all of these are added up together. What's the sum of all these for infinity, out to infinity, well, kind of, um, and I'll, somehow I can get it just with this single number here. Well, yeah, it's super easy. Let me actually do it, and then we're going to talk about it and describe it. This is my A. I thought I had my, blind, my red color. This is my A1 right here. It's a 1. It's the first term. Very easy. What am I doing uh, here to here? What am I multiplying by? By a 1 fourth. 1 minus a fourth. So at 1 over 3 fourths, and if you flip that fraction, it's 4 over 3. That's it. Cool, cool. Well, so you're saying that all of these here are added up, all of them added up, add, 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 and it somehow magically mm, is 4 thirds, and that's it? Yep, because you can see how this fraction is getting really small, and eventually you're going to be adding zeros. Not really zero, but it's so small, it's basically like zero. And if you add a zero to something, it doesn't change. And so the idea is that it, it levels off at some particular number, and here it is four-thirds. Cool, huh? You will see that again. Um, actually, you'll see it right now, because there's another problem. So um, <laughs> I got two minus two-fifths plus two over 25 uh, minus is the next one, actually. So notice that it's positive, negative, positive, negative, all the way down. Um, same thing, S is equal to A1 over 1 minus R. We want to find out what this is going to be. So my first term is a 2. And what am I doing from here to here? I'm multiplying by what, a fifth? Oh, negative 1 fifth. And so notice that I'm going to have two negatives in the bottom, make a positive. 1 plus a fifth. That's 5 over 5 plus 1 over 5 makes 6 over 5. I'm going to take it and flip it to make it 10 over 6 or simplified to 5 thirds. And that's your answer. Now, I used, actually in class, I always go through about how this works, thinking about it with uh, pluses and minuses put together. Notice that you had some positive, but then you added a little bit of a negative number. Then you add a little bit of positive, and then you add a little negative. And you're kind of like, honing into this particular number on the number line, it turns out to be five-thirds in this particular case. Um, but I make analogies with it in class. I'm not going to do it here because they're gross. <laughs> not because I don't like you, but they're gross. So I'm not going to talk about it because I don't want to gross you out on a recording. Um, but you can ask me about it later. So next question. I have um, a 0.55 repeated... And it's equal to, and they say this is equal to 55 over 100 plus 55 over 10,000 plus dot, dot, dot. And all these added together should be this. What? 
<laughs> this problem is one of those just startling answers, and I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer. It's five ninths. Oh, wow, I totally saw that. No, you didn't. Well, maybe you did. I don't know. Uh, I didn't. What they're actually wanting you to do is take this repeater, and you're going to take the repeater divided by 99. You're going to repeat it, or you're going to divide it by nines to the value of the repeated digits. So you had two digits being repeated, so you have two nines in the bottom. Well, that obviously simplifies to five nines. But let's do another one, like another a new randomization. So let's say that I have 0.98 repeated. What's the answer? It's going to be 98 over 99. You see that it, do it doesn't simplify this time, but you're putting as many nines as you have digits from the repeaters. Okay. Whew. 11, 3, 65. Um, this one's a, a very fun problem, but they, they just... They blew it. I'm just going to tell you, they blew it. But uh, I, I, you know what? It's a fun problem. So uh, <laughs> let's just say, here, here's the situation. You're going to make, um, I think it's something about allowances or dollars or savings or something like that. You're going to make $1 on the first day. And then you're going to have $3 on the second day. And then you're going to have $9 on the third day. And so they say, what are you going to have on the 11th? Uh, day. And this is super easy here. You are just going to continue on with the sequence here. Uh, one, three, nine, da, 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 da. You do it 11 times and you'll get out to something. Um, what's my first term? It's one. What's my R? What am I multiplying by each time? Three. And so I can use my formula. A sub n is equal to A sub 1 times R to the n minus 1. It's going to be a 1 times 3 to the 11 minus 1. So basically 3 to the 10th. And um, I got 5, 9, 0, 4, 9 dollars. Now, the reason why they blew it, and I don't know why they didn't do it the cool way. Uh, the cool way is there was a uh, math history for you, right? There's always math histories here. Um there was this person who invented chess. He invented chess. And uh, he went to the king and showed chess to him. And the king was like, oh, wow, chess is so awesome. Of course, chess is an awesome game. So uh, he says, how can I repay you? And the guy said, oh, well, uh, on, the, on the chess board, there's, I think, 64 different blocks because it's 8 by 8. So for each block, on the first day, you give me one grain of rice, and then the second block, you're going to give me two grains of rice on the second day. And the next one, you're going to give me four grains of rice, and you're going to keep doubling it every time here uh, for the next hour or 64 days. And, I mean, this is a, we're talking grains of rice. And the king was like, uh, okay, I guess. I mean, that's silly little guy. He doesn't really know his math, does he? Ha, 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 ha. I'll give him a, just a couple bags of rice. It'll be fine. Uh, yeah, about right around here is when he got beheaded. That's right. Not the king, but the guy, the guy who made chess, because <laughs> he made a, made the king feel like a fool when he was giving, like, umpteen thousands of grains of rice to him now at that point. <laughs> um, just real quick as, a, as an example here. Uh, I know we got Desmos up. Let me get out of here real quick. I want to go back to the scientific. I, I, we got to talk about the math history. It's really fun. It's like... On the fifth day, he's only getting 32 more, more grains of rice. Of course, you're adding these all up. What about the tenth day? Uh, and he's making that much more. Uh, by the time you get to the, what, 40th day or so? And if he would have made it to the 64th day... <laughs> too clever for his own good. And you lose your head for it. Sorry. I'm just, that's the story. I don't know if it's real or not. Go to Wikipedia. So 11373. <laughs> um, I got $24,000 uh, in my salary. I'm going to be working there for 18 years. And uh, I get a 7% raise each, each year. So that's really nice. Uh, they want the total salary 
uh, over the uh, 18 years total. As in, and we did this on the last section, you take your uh, paycheck, you put it into savings, and you never touch it every time. You do not pay bills, you do not pay food, you do not pay for gifts, you do not do not anything at all. You're just putting your money away, $24,000, you get a little bit of raise, 18 years later, how much do you have in the account? Now, this is an interesting problem. And we've got some cool things. We've got N, how many times you're doing it, I guess. you got your A1, that's pretty easy. Uh, but what about your R? Is your R just going to be 7? Is it going to be 0 0.07? Uh, no, R is actually 1.07. Let's talk about it. So I'm adding 100% I'm adding to the 7% to make this guy. But why is that? Well, here's the thing. The, the next year, not the first year, but the second year, when you get that raise, don't you retain the $24,000? You retain 100% of what you had plus an additional 7%. Kind of think of like uh, you're buying a candy bar for, uh, a, well, a dollar, I guess. And uh, sales tax is 8.25%, right? Here in Texas, at least. So then um, do you only pay $0.08 cents and then you're good? You get, you get your candy bar? No. Uh, it's going to be at, uh, $8.09, I guess rounded or not, uh, $8.08, you're, you're paying for the whole product plus the percentage extra. So that's, if you were to actually do the formula, it'd be 1.0825 that you're multiplying it by in order to get that amount. Okay, so that's my R. R is now this guy. I got my N, I got my A1. And so then they're saying total is SN, 18. No, 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 I'm sorry, this A1 right there. Sorry, sorry. A1 is uh, my 24,000, uh, one minus r is the 1.07 all to the 18 power all divided by 1 minus 1.07 uh i put it all in the calculator and i get 815976.78 dollars in your account again you did not pay any bills so of course you're going to be having a whole lot in that account over 18 years of working so this is the very last problem, and it's very applicable. Um, I have, of course, got stories for each one of these, but let's just go ahead and do it. This is the annuity problem. Annuity problem. Annuities. Uh, and annuities are things like, oh, you, you put money into an account, but then they, uh, they give you some more, and then you, you toss some more in every month, and they build on that some interest, and you toss some more in. And uh, they give me this big, big formula here. Uh, so I've got uh, P, which is your principal, is uh, times, and then two opens, one plus the R over N, all to the NT, that looks familiar, minus one, and then all divided by R divided by N. So that's the formula that they give you on this problem. Uh, again, what's going on is that you're adding your principal each time. Let's just say 50 bucks. And so you're going to put 50 bucks into the account every month. And so your account balance was zero. You add 50 bucks. Boom, it jumps up 50. But over the, over the month, it grows a little bit because you got money in your account. You got an interest rate and all that stuff. Cool. But then at the end of the month, you got, or the first of the month, you get another $50 put in there. Boom. And then it grows even more because it has more money to grow on. And then, boom, again, and, and it grows more and more. And you can see that instead of just putting one lump sum and letting it grow, you're going to get something much higher over the end. And this is how retirement works. Don't you put money into retirement every month or whatever it is? Uh, that's the idea here as well. And so um, let me try to get some more room on that formula. And so... Let's use this formula to figure out how it's going to work. I'm going to go from 25 years old uh, to 65 years old. So how much time are we talking in between? 40 years of working. That's yo, years old, by the way. Um, <laughs> anyways, P, they're saying you're putting $80 into this account every month. Month. 12 times a month or 12 times a year. And your rate here is 0.0616% interest rate. Uh, it sounds really good. Let's put it all in. So I got my A is equal to uh, my $80 that I keep putting in times open, open. That's why they do the square braces because there's like two opens at once. In fact, you know what? My notes actually just have two parentheses. 
um, 1 plus my point zero six one all divided by 12 to the power of 12 times 40 make it look a little bit better then minus 1 close close divide by and then I got my R which was the point zero six one all over the 12 calculator definitely calculator so I'm gonna go back to Desmos here uh, and let's put that in so uh, we have a big fraction got an 80 open open 1 plus 0 0.061 divide by 12 all to the power of 12 times oh 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 you see it did you see it uh, so um, Desmos doesn't like it when you do that so instead I'm going to use parentheses 12 times 40 and then it's okay with all in the power uh, in the bottom, I'm going to use a set of parentheses just in case, uh, 0 0.061 and then divided by 12. And that is your uh, amount in the account. That's your amount in the account uh, at the end of 40 years. And so it's funny because you're putting only $80 in a month. Um, and at the end of your time of working, now you got $160,000, you can go buy a house or something. Um, and it was only $80 a month for the next 40 years. Uh, it's interesting, though, because that's the amount in your account. Cool. Uh, but how much interest did you gain? You see, a lot of this money is actually your money. You put in $80 each month. So how much did you actually gain from it? Does that make sense? You can always put $80 away, but that was the money that you had. How much interest did you make from the bank? And so how you're going to do this is you're going to say your total amount that you had in the account uh, minus how much you uh, put in. I'm going to say your money. And that should be the interest. So how much money did we put in? Well, we put in $80 a month, 12 months in a year. 40 years of working uh, calculator. And uh, I got, I got, I actually don't have it with me, so let me actually use my calculator. 80 times 12 times 40, and I got uh, 38400. Only $38,000. That's not too bad. And so, uh, what you're going to say is the 163709.08. You're going to subtract the 38,000. Notice that it's going to be a zero, zero for the cents and all that. And I got a total of 125309.08. And that is the interest that you made. That's, that's money that the bank gave you for free for putting it all in there. Awesome. All right. We are done with the entire class's lecture videos. Thank you very much and have a great day.